Antonio will be the first to say that all of this, in fact he has just said to us, all of this needs drilling down, drilling down, pushing down. And that's why we are here, Antonio. Activists, passionate, concerned, we will not rest. We will not rest while young girls and young men are taken and abused and imprisoned and have their dignity stripped from them. So we will work with you and we will fight this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really pleased to be uh, able to introduce you to someone who's become a friend of mine over these um, last years, uh, to Cherie Booth, Cherie Blair. Uh, Cherie comes uh, to us because she's given her life to working, and un uh, working with and understanding the issues around human rights, and particularly the pressing issues around the liberation of women the liberation of women, rights and opportunities and equality for women in our world. If you want to change the world, I discovered uh, a quarter of a century ago as I uh, first got involved in a charity work, if you want to change the world, empower women and you will change countries, you will change communities. You will, it's true. I know. I say it. I'll say it to you because it's true. I've discovered it around the world. Give the money to men, they are in trouble. Give the money to women and they will use it and they will change their communities and change their countries. Uh, Cherie uh, comes to speak to us uh, from this vast wealth of understanding of these issues, but also to give us practical information about how we can go away and get involved. So Cherie, thank you forgiveness uh, this evening. We appreciate it, no end. A round of applause for Cherie Blair. Well, thank you for that fantastic introduction, Steve. And can, can I just say how privileged I am to be here with you all tonight, to stand up together to stop the appalling scandal of human trafficking. And I'm also a little overawed because I'm sharing the platform with two incredible people who deserve real credit for the new urgency in combating this terrible crime. That's, of course, Antonio. And Antonio, you, you know, I've just seen this report and I, I can barely lift it, it is so heavy. It's, it's a fantastic report, but the fact that to tackle trafficking, we need this sort of toolkit just tells us just how deep and prolonged the problem is. So thank you for all your efforts. And of course, Steve. Um, anyone who knows Steve, and I'm sure many people in this room knows it, that when he asks you to do something, it is impossible <laughs> to say no. And um, this is a man who moves mountains. And he has put his heart and soul into this campaign. Um, so I feel a little humble to be asked to speak as well. So I thought actually I'd better talk about something that I really do know about, um, which is how by fighting to ensure that rights are spread across the world, we can combat trafficking and indeed change the world. I come from the issue of trafficking through my work as a British lawyer specialising in human rights and also my personal determination as a, as a woman brought up by two incredible strong women herself, my mother and my grandmother, to do all I can to remove the barriers blocking the progress of women. Barriers that I feel so lucky to have been born when I was in the late 20th century here in Britain. Because the barriers I had to overcome are nothing compared to the barriers that women still face today across the world. Now, of course, there's no more basic human right than the freedom from slavery. In fact, it can lay claim to being the very first human right recognized by international law. As we've heard, Britain outlawed the Atlantic slave trade just over 200 years ago. 
and that was followed later by an outright ban on slavery throughout the British Empire. In the two centuries that have followed these actions, there have been something like 80 international conventions and documents aimed at stopping the vile practice of slavery, which finds its modern form in trafficking. It clearly demonstrates the world's revulsion at this inhumanity, but it also demonstrates the scale of the task and the limits of the law in stopping trafficking. International law may make clear that those responsible for enslavement are guilty of a crime against humanity and that they can be viewed as enemies of all people. In fact, the appallingness of their crime is recognized by the international community by putting them beyond the protection of individual countries and making them equivalent to the torturer and liable to arrest and prosecution by the International Criminal Court. But you know, it's a mark of just how profitable this evil trade is and the difficulty of enforcing the law that frankly, trafficking and the ownership of human beings continues and is not deterred by even 80 international documents. It's still going on on a huge and shameful scale. And when we think about William Wilberforce and his fellow campaigners, how shocked they would be and appalled if he thought that 200 years after the abolition, we still had such staggering statistics about slavery. Millions, billions of people, as Antonio said, still tricked or forced from their communities to be exploited and abused. At any one time, it's estimated that over 2.5 million people are recruited, entrapped, transported, and exploited with enforced labor as a result of trafficking both within countries and, of course, across national boundaries.